Hello friends, yes. welcome to UK Dreamers. Uh, welcome to this special session with so many doctors and we'll, today we'll be talking mm. about MTI in through and through basically. That's what I would say. So I heartily welcome Dr. Pranesh, Dr. Saud and Dr. Pandari to the you know, webcast. So thank you so much guys. Thank you so much for joining, giving your valuable time out of your busy lives in the UK. All right. So First of all, uh, kindly introduce yourselves. Pranesh, start with you. Hi, hi friends. Hi, UK Dreamers. My name is Pranesh Jain and I'm uh, one of the renal doctors who have come through MTI. I've been here for roughly one year and two months now. Uh, I, I belong to a state in India called Chhattisgarh, central part of India. And uh, um, I had my initial training in medicine as well as nephrology while I was in India. And then I thought of getting some, some exposure of how nephrology is practiced in a developed country with, uh, with a different set of work pattern like UK. Uh, I got information from a few of my friends and one of my consultants who basically backed me up, gave me good references and basically guided throughout I got a good link. I got a good contact and uh, I approached, I did my application. There's a whole process of MTI, how to apply in MTI and what are the phases you go through, yeah, which we probably we'll yeah, discuss during this uh, interview. And yes, that's about me. Yes, Dr. Saud, please. Hello. Hello, uh, everyone. And Aman, thank you very much for having me. So I am Saud Ansari. I'm one of the MTI doctors here in UK, uh, and, and I've come from Delhi. I did my graduation and re-graduation from Delhi, Malana Dad Medical College. And after that, I thought, what next? Uh, how can I improve myself and what do I, what options do I have? So I was searching in, on internet and I thought that uh, it will be better to go there as soon as possible to the UK and start the MTI journey. Um, we can discuss this later on, how, uh, how it has gone. Okay, that's for me. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. South. Dr. Bandari, please. Hello, UK Dreamers, and thank you, Aman, for calling me here. So uh, I basically belong to Jaipur, and I have done my uh, post-graduation from South Jung, Delhi in uh, Revision Oncology. After that, I did uh, uh, my senior residency from Eames, Delhi. And having worked for a couple of years in, uh, in a private hospital in Jaipur, I felt that I need to improve my knowledge and my skills in oncology. So I thought UK is the best best place to come, yes. and uh, MTI was a very feasible option at, at that time. And so I've taken the route. Great, great to hear all your stories. Thank you so much. Thank mm. you so much for joining us. So yes, we're gonna be talking in contrast today. I would say. All right, guys. So so first of all, like, uh, how did you come to know about MTI in general? Like, uh, let's start, Pranesh. What do you think? So as I said, uh, my my basic motive was just to get a bit more exposure and training in nephrology. This is this was all my my uh, boss, my consultant in. Uh, Mumbai. This was his vision. So he, he had a few plans. So I initially had two plans. One was to get a fellowship from International Society of Nephrology, which would, would, would have been Sydney, in Sydney, Australia, because I had uh, a, roughly two months of experience in Sydney. So that was my plan A. And my plan B was uh, uh, in UK through MTI. I didn't know much about MTI then, because it was my plan B. And I was quite sure that I'll get get through my plan A. So I didn't research about MTI then. All I did was I just, because we were in touch with, uh, so I'm, I am uh, working currently in Royal Derby Hospital, which is um, in Der a city called Derby. It is pronounced as Derby, but it's Derby. So because I was in touch with somebody in HR, they just told me these are the things you need to do. Step one, two, three, four. So because it was also my plan B, so I started doing whatever they told me to do. I went on with my application. Uh, while I was halfway through my application, I found that, well, my plan is unsuccessful. So I eventually landed up to my plan B. 
So okay. basically, I didn't I didn't research for MTI. I didn't know much about MTI initially, but I found out later when I was already up in the application. All right, Doctor Saud, how did you come to know about this? All right, so by the end of my post graduation, I was thinking like there's not much to learn in the institute I'm working. If I do a scholarship there, so then and I thought, what next can I do? So I could have done super specialty or could have gone to some other country to learn or work. Then I came to know that there's an FRCA, uh, which is one of the top most uh, qualifications you can get. And then you have a good amount of options to go anywhere in the world and you will be well respected or given money and et cetera and all these things. So I was going through searching the routes about that. Then I heard about MTI on internet. I emailed the uh, global partnerships for in Royal College of Anesthesia. And then they told me these are the eligibilities and uh, to get an IELTS and send me a CV. Then I created my CV and sent them. The first thing they did, I, have, I sent a one page CV to them. And then say, they said, uh, we have received an incomplete CV. Can you please elaborate this CV? I mean, can you please send me the whole CV? Then I made it five pages and then send it to them. So I was, I was, I didn't knew how to do it, but over, over time, they sent my CVs to places and I got an email for an interview. I did that interview, got the job, and then the process went on and on and on for six months or so. And then finally I came here. That's how it happened for me. Great. Great to hear that. Dr. Bhandari, please, your version, please. Uh, well, uh, after finishing my MD, I did my DNB and started working in a private center. But then I felt that the the uh, the oncological treatment that we are giving to our patients in India they are quite different from the international standards, uh, probably because of the cost factor and because we don't have any national guidelines. So whereas in the uh, UK they have a very uh, systematic and a very you know. Um, well-formed guidelines and according to which the whole country uh, operates. So I wanted to learn that. I wanted to learn the, uh, the right approach to a, to a patient and how they are being treated and followed up and why the patients here, the, especially the cancer patients here, they are living much longer and they have much better survival rates than, than the patients in India. So for this reason, I started to... Uh, prepare for the FRCR, which is FRCR in clinical oncology, because here the oncologists, they do both the systemic therapy and radiation, and they are more of, uh, they are more site specific, L uh, like there would be a breast oncologist, there would be a lung oncologist, who will only look at the lung cancers, uh, while in India, we are more of a, you know, generic oncologist. So I wanted to learn that, I, I prepared for the exam, I cleared two steps, but, uh, but for the third step, it needed more a practical experience and uh, and a real uh, what should I say a real uh, uh, hands-on experience uh, of working in NHS. So I tried to find some jobs in UK, but obviously because I didn't have any GNC eligible qualifications, so I couldn't get that. But uh, one of the uh, uh, job uh, agents, he he uh, actually told me about the scheme, MTI scheme, and he actually even helped me in preparing my uh, CV. Uh, so I mean, even uh, I had a one-page CV earlier, but then he helped me in, in writing a proper CV. And uh, I made that CV, I applied to a few colleges, and after, say, I think it took me around one and a half years to get a, up, to get a, a call from the, one of the colleges in uh, UK for MTI. So I think there are two main things which determine whether we want to come to the UK. First, the zeal to come to UK and second, our CVs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think CV, CVs are very, very, very important because see, if mm. you, you, know, you know that you are well-versed in your subject, you have the skills, but they don't know. The recruiters, they don't know. So you need to present that in a very well-concise, in a very, you know, prop, in a proper manner. And that should reflect in your CV. So if you have a good CV, irrespective of the publication, it, it really doesn't matter if you have like five publications or 15 or none. They want to see whether you have worked and, and, uh, and, and, the, and if you are able to present that in a 
well formed way mm-hmm. it really helps you stand out stand out from the crowd and i agree with dr bhandari <clears throat> i mean uh, we don't have a very really good concept to cv in our country so they do an interview and uh, and ask where we work but but what have you worked in that institute i mean some institute might do just some sort of surgery and some might do a whole lot of bunch of surgeries with pediatrics with these uh, various specialties but the other guy in front of you doesn't know it so you have to sell yourself that i have done pediatrics i have done geriatric i have done general orthopedics everything i have done that i was teaching as well everything you can sell them sell them that's how it is goes exactly exactly that that's what i would like to add like you know uh, one thing that i've learned coming to the uk your specialty commitment matters a lot uh, it's like as we said when we are representing ourselves virtually through our cvs uh, we as you said you know there's no proper culture of cvs in the world that we live in but the western countries the western world i would say emphasizes a lot on cv so yes uh, to all the candidates all the other colleagues doctors who plan to come to the uk as dr saud said sell yourself well how do you sell yourself well by virtually representing yourself on the cvs showing commitment to the specialties like pranesh did uh, go to australia did some nephrology work there so, and when he came to the uk he did have some specialty commitments the same goes with dr bandari and dr ansari so like that's what i'm saying uh, so this was the brief uh, you know determining factor that made you to come to the uk and i would ask you now how was your experience pre experience coming to the uk and post experiences when once you came to the uk let's start with pranesh so i think aman this is the most important question because you somehow get some help before coming to uk uh, once you are in the game it's it's quite different and i would say difficult because i i don't think most of us are usually prepared for what's coming it in in terms mm. of basically medicine there's a huge difference in the way medicine is practiced in this country compared to what i was uh, aware of before so coming to so before coming to the uk I, i spoke to many people to basically guide me what are the things that i should be aware of and what are the special things that Uh, that is required so one of the most important things that i was told almost by everybody is the sophisticated way of you know presenting yourself and uh, small tits and bits like etiquettes and when you speak we usually especially in india we just take it for granted we we are not very much sorry thank you uh, please uh, these these adjectives and uh, these words but they are quite uh they quite uh frequently used in the uk this was the first thing that i was told by almost everybody that i spoke to and once i came the good thing about where i work is there was a good support and uh, i think i got roughly few weeks of shadow period where i was just as asked to follow people and see how they work what are the things that you will have to do what are the things that you would be expected to do and things and at every i think at every aspect at every point they would there's a there's a system of feedback which uh, i wasn't aware initially uh, they would give you feedback and they would ask feedback from you and they take it quite seriously they take it seriously in a constructive manner so i was given feedback every every now and then uh, about what i was doing um and similarly i was asked about feedback so only when they think and only when you present that you're confident now enough to work independently uh only then i was asked to work independently um the other thing i would say is i i don't know if any of i mean if aman saud or ruchir you were in a habit of working 9 to 5 but i was uh, i never i never could imagine that i would work 9 to 5 and then switch off button off dukan band <laughs> so this is a thing that obviously it very rarely you would be done by 5 but if it's done after 5 or 6 once it's done once you're out of hospital you're out of hospital 
So this is good thing. And the other thing is weekends. I don't know if similarly South or Ruchir mm-hmm. had a concept of enjoying a weekend when weekend meaning Saturday and Sunday. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wasn't, but now I am quite used to and I think mm-hmm. it's it's very much into me that weekend is coming now. So in, in initially my first year, I wasn't, there are a few things that I noticed that I have now developed, like um, the culture of weekend, planning your weekends ahead. Mm-hmm. Uh, basically planning i wasn't a good planner initially i used to be everything mm. everything last moment so planning is a thing that i i think i, I learned here mm. so yeah these are the things that i I've agree noticed. i and totally agree many things weekends. and many things yeah 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 and weekends yes, i mean carry on, i used to envy my engineer friends that they have weekends and i'm working on saturday as well and then sometimes on sundays but here yeah there's a proper weekend you are Saturday and day off if you are working day jobs and everything. True, true. Yeah. So I would still say I envy all of you because working in A and E doesn't give you that advantage. It's more yeah. like a bang, bang, bang. <laughs> but but yeah, yeah but overall, uh, overall, if you see, it, it's a well balanced life. So hmm. I guess none of us expected this to to be in the first place. Like because we're so used to the work culture being so workaholic, working out of the hours, on calls, being on the phone, and whatnot. Like so, when you come, it's initially a surprise, I guess, for everyone, and you're like, oh. This is re- actually happening, you know. So that that does give you. Yeah, another- I w- I thought that I was becoming lazy, yar, Aman. I thought that, hey, yar, what is this? Okay, I don't have to work Saturday, Sunday. Okay, fine. Sunday, I used to feel not go- feel like not going to work on Monday. I I thought I was becoming lazy. See, perks are working here. All right, Dr. Saud, let, let's move on to you. So how was your, like, uh, I would say, what were the challenges that you faced? Like, for, let's hear from you. The challenges uh, with this MTI scheme landing okay. into the UK and your initial days of the work, I would say. So, I mean, one of the challenges of UK is the before coming to the UK as well. I mean, uh, the application process is a bit lengthy one. There are a lot of eligibility criteria, which one should be should have done their work, uh, their um, homework and everything. Also, you they, in our country, there's not a culture of emails and everything. So we used to tend we tend to take them for granted, and we get an email, we'll uh, reply back to them after some time or something. But uh, be proactive, reply the email as soon as you get them. All these things, and when you once I landed in the UK, it was a bit scary. I mean. This was the first time I came out of my Delhi and out of my hospital to a different country altogether. Uh, and it is challenging, definitely. Uh, there are many challenges. There's, la- there's a language challenge. There is etiquette challenge. There is whole set of protocols which are there, which you have to follow. And you are always scared whether you are doing anything wrong or not. And as Pranesh has gone through the shadow period, they are very supportive of you. So they know what we don't know what we are getting getting into, but they know and they get these uh, uh, students like us there and they know what we can do for them. They are appreciative of that and what uh, what should we go through to become competent enough to work there. So there is a lot of support there. There's a lot of time which is uh, given to you to do everything for bank balance, I mean, bank opening and everything. But yeah, you have to be on your toes. You have to be on your senses all the time, especially depending upon what specialty you are. But in anesthetics and ITU, you have to be on your toes every point in time. And everyone from the junior most person to staff to the consultant do like this. They're very committed here. And we you have to be uh, that much committed to fit into the system. That's how I felt it. With respect to the life here, it was initially it was, peak COVID time. So IT was full, very, very stressful and everything. Um, and it was cold, cold weather as well. So not much of, not nothing much to do. So yeah, but we went through that. And as you pass six months, I will say, you try, you start liking here. You go out for walks and you enjoy uh, every bit of it. Almost all of the summer you'll enjoy, I'm sure of it. So yeah, it is easier now. Uh, you are able to understand much more of English now. I mean, how they are speaking and 
how you have to speak and how you have to behave in front of them and everything and how you have to speak with the patients as well so that part has come down and you are understanding more about protocol so it is it will take some time to settle in it will not be a piece of cake it will not be a green grass it will be just like a bit of challenging period and then you will uh, go through it yeah that's very true uh, like uh, what i would uh, add to this is you know like since we come through the sponsorship pathway and we do not take the plab 2 candidates coming to the plab to have this language scenario this ethical scenarios and the communication mm. scenarios and everything but but since like yes the pathway with us is the sponsorship once so i think yes uh, the initial 6 months as dr ansari said are challenging in terms of adapting into the system it's not sure. that you don't know clinics you, it, it's not the clinical things that you get challenged as yes they've got their own set of protocols own guidelines trust guidelines and everything that we can get into but yes the what to say the initial diversification of so many things including the language the cold weather the the long uh, you know dark days mm. uh, yes the, that does true, true. all right moving to bengari yes yes dr south please please if you want to so, say something i mean in and they are very supportive of that they know that and and the i mean the key uh, pranesh told me to get through all of that is to keep asking them questions and keep letting them know that you are new here and then they'll they'll know and they'll modify themselves that he is new person and i'll tell them that this is you are doing wrong it's just not wrong they'll say it would be better if you do it like that way so yeah if you tell them that you are new and do tell them that please help me they are very helpful they they will not judge you like that that we are a judge in india that definitely moving to dr bandari dr bandari please uh, what challenges do you think you know you had to overcome which were most difficult for you and like how did you cope with them and you know and anything for the viewers who want to listen oh well well i think uh, i came in this covid time and this actually delayed everything all the applications i got selected in june last year and it took and it took them up complete 9 months to process my application so things were moving very slow you need a lot of patients they don't reply to mails frequently because most of the time they are on leave <laughs> so and they and, and because of covid they were, most of them were working from home so it was a long wait and uh, and then there are so many application forms to be filled and there are so many things they ask for that you are not aware of if you have a guide a mentor or someone who lives in uk who could help you with this it would be great because uh, you 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 don't want to make mistakes in this because it will again increase this the the whole time period so it's always best to com- write a com- uh, completely uh, finish your application in the first attempt try to minimize your errors so that you could you could you know uh, get to the application process fast uh this was the application and, and the cv uh, always it's all, it's a good idea to get your cv checked by someone in uk if you have some friend or some senior in uk let them have a look at your cv and they will help you improve it if not there are many um many people who who uh, who are in the um job placement agencies so they can also help you in improving your cv try to get in touch with one of them and uh, you make a good cover letter you should you should you should actually be able to show that you are really interested in coming to uk and uh, you are very keen to learn the new skills because that is the whole intention of the scheme uh, that uh, they bring in uh, foreign trained doctors to uk help them in improving their skills and bring them to a certain standard and then they can go back to their country after the after the two years period so this was the application process when i came to uk see, I, i have been here a few times before so i knew what i was getting into so the language and food i was expecting it to be different so that was not a shock but uh, uh, it's is the is the process of applying for uh, like many small things like account, bank accounts or your your licenses or everything these take time unlike in india where it's very easy to you know get all these things done it's quite difficult in uh, uh, uk because they follow a very strict protocol 
they have their own way of doing things and they will not uh, they will not compromise on any of their you know rules uh, in a, and they will not go out of your of their way to help you out so so uh, your paperwork should be complete your uh, whatever is asked from you make sure you do it as soon as possible and because i am i am i'm quite i'm quite a lazy person because i usually i usually keep delaying things and do it at the uh, last moment I, i think it's a very bad idea and coming to uk this has actually changed me i now plan my 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 uh, uh, whatever action that needs to be done i plan it in advance and i make sure i complete it well before the deadline and to don't wait for it besides that yes the trust has been very supportive for me as well i was given a six week uh, shadow period was rotated to all the departments and i i got a chance to work with different consultants so so that they know me and i know them well before before my actual work start and uh, the staffing agency here they have been very very helpful and uh, very accommodative and whatever we had we needed they provided us so i think it has it has been a good experience overall and my 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 start has been good and i hope i complete in a on a good note as well great Thanks. great to hear that dr bandari so i will come to a very very important question now as southeast asians as indians the most important thing in our lives is food and most of the questions that i get get like uh, like for our muslim brothers and sisters they would be like do we get halal food or not dr ansari what's your stay on that uh, you can get them definitely but it is you'll have to find out where to get it all so, right so depending upon where you live and i think in i have heard in big cities like birmingham london uh manchester and everything you might get halal food in the super stores as well but here in derby there is nothing in super stores as uh, in terms of halal meat so i have to go go th- to some pakistani sh- shops or bangladeshi shops they get halal food so i'll go i go there and find it uh you have to find where to find the desi food so and if you talk to the other in i i mean the first duty i did in itu uh, so there were many indian there were some there were one person from kerala there were one person from karachi so i asked they told me this specifically that if you want food these are the places to call and order and these are the places you should go and get them and they are there so yeah uh, you'll get by i mean uh, there will not be a problem the taste will not be the same 100% sure but yeah it will be 80% or so something like that but you have to find where it is yeah moving to pranesh pranesh you are a vegetarian how how is life in uk mm-hmm. for a vegetarian guy so i'm 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 a veg- i'm not just a vegetarian i'm a jain on top of vegetarian so i had to make sure that i have a chef with me all the while so i brought my wife with me Oh, and Pranesh, this is not going to end well for you now. <laughs> no, no, no. We need to no, cut so, this line, please. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I basically, I found a, st- I, basically, I was looking for shops which have Indian vegetables so that we can prepare. The most important thing that I would like to tell the viewers is that the best thing I did was I brought most of the spices that we use to make food mm-hmm. food. at least a stock that would last for 6 months with me because i was sure that you will find it somewhere in the uk but you would need some time to find where so 6 months was a good enough time so i because i was not sure that i'll get what food i need and exactly what type of food i'll get i wouldn't know so spices i brought and everything else i could get here as south mentioned uh, the way we find food in india is not the way you find food here especially there are few shops few supermarkets where you get what you want so it's not easily available everywhere but it's available definitely somewhere it's a matter of just finding that place you need you need to be in touch with the local community here who will be who really are, are really helpful I, i don't think any community is not helpful Mm. they are very they are very helping they they know what are the what are the things that you you usually struggle with when you are new to a country uh, they guide you accordingly 
they told me shops they told me which which specific thing to go to which shop and mm. um, i did that and i found everything i needed uh, the other thing is if you have some somebody who's your relative in that country that also eases thing a bit more so i, I had a brother he, i have a brother here who helped me for everything who lives in london so london is not far isn't it just 2 hours so we used to go to london quite frequently initially and whatever is a problem they used to sort it sort out for us mm. so food is a bit of problem if you are vegetarian especially but nothing is impossible all right dr bandari what's your experience and what would you tell about the main thing that drives our brains the food ah <laughs> uh, well uh... and the food is different here so especially if you are vegetarian or a vegan like pranesh you will have a lot of difficulty but if you if you relish non vegetarian food i think this is a good place i myself i am a vegetarian me and my wife but uh, we like experimenting with different cuisines so whatever vegetarian options there are in, in our cuisines we, we we do try them out and there wherever you live in uk there will always be a, a indian restaurants or options or takeaways uh, uh where you can have indian food if you have if you feel the craving for it there are also many apps now which will deliver to your home in case you in case you find it difficult to travel so and then there are uh, many uh, indian stores which are now online you can even order papad bhujia achar whatever you like from these stores though they are quite expensive here in uk and it could be a wise idea if you get if you could bring them from your country or if someone else is coming to uk your friend ask them to bring bring some stuff for you and it will also be a good idea to bring masala spices and you know the the routine stuff with you we also got me and my wife we got a cooker with us because it's very difficult to find a cooker here you can also bring a mixer grinder and all those stuff but they are quite difficult to find here mm-hmm. um this thing will be very helpful and uh, rather than bringing clothes and shoes and all those you will find everything here you don't need to bring all those stuff so rather bring these things uh they would be more helpful besides that uh, i think uh, we are enjoying the food we we really don't have much complaints sometimes we do feel the crave we whenever uh, we have that a feeling we go to a south indian restaurant or some other place we can have the indian food and they're, they're pretty good um, in most of the places yeah <clears throat> what i would add to this is uh, like uh, for for the guys who plan to come like uh, if you are near the big cities like birmingham manchester london uh, you know there's plenty of uh, stores which would give you your foods like not only like indian like pakistani bangladeshi caribbean african there's so many options uh, and to be honest i welcome you all to wolverhampton because we've got good good indian restaurants here like birmingham definitely i've been to birmingham you know it's definitely a different world like uh, be it the halal mm-hmm. fish be 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 it the uh, you know vegetarian food there's loads of options but wolverhampton on the other hand is also a good one so uh you know uh, what what's the best uh, we, we, will, we will come to yeah we will come to wolverhampton amman if you if you are going to treat us all three of us are going to come with our family <laughs> definitely uh, we are looking forward so uh, that's what i'm saying you know you know uh, when i started in my department my ed so here uh, the thursdays were called as street thursdays because there there is one uh, very very mm. senior consultant in my department mr lin so uh, you know the first time i could smell samosas in my department i was like man i'm hallucinating you know because uh, what's happening you know and then suddenly he calls me oh come in come in and then i see a big box of samosas in the emergency department and okay as a indian you know it touches me a lot but my colleagues like the local colleagues from like england were equally enjoying the samosas dipping them in the chutney and having them so i think in wolverhampton in new cross at least samosa is definitely known as you know mm-hmm. uh, secondary 
<laughs> sort of snacking and every everyone knows what's a samosa is so yes it oh, it depends oh. a lot it depends a lot on which place you are going but yes if you're going mm-hmm. to you know a uh, a little uh, places where you don't have much of the local communities yes you can struggle otherwise i think most of the big cities and the metro cities do have all these stores from all the countries be it india be it pakistan bangladesh you know parts of africa everywhere like i think it's quite rich in that aspect all right so i guess enough of foodie talking with the men so let's go to you know let, let's conclude the session today by asking you guys uh, what should be you know your pearls of wisdom your take home messages for all the guys who are on the other side of the world trying to get into the uk struggling with time uh, struggling with the initial expenses uh, you know uh, as you said the email stuff getting the documents right and you know moving with the family all together you know it's all a different challenge different world out here so let's start with dr bhandari now dr bhandari uh, w- what should be the you know take home message from your end for the people who want to come to the uk through the sponsorship schemes be be it the sponsorship schemes be it the royal college be it the plab like uh, experienced guys with plab what's your take home message for them well, i think one must have a very realistic expectations of what they are getting into and you are coming here on a on a training post you are coming here on a it's a it's a temporary position the mti for two years in case you want you like the country you want to stay back then there are other ways of you know extending your visa or getting to another visa because this is a tier 5 visa is only given for two years so i have seen people coming here they are struggling because of the because of the languages because of the uh, the work culture the documentation the electronic records well this is something which is a norm everywhere in the world except in the developing countries so you must know that you will have to face all this you will have to write email you will have to you know properly document your uh, your your findings and everything uh, letters writing letters dictating letters and signing them off these are something that it's not there in india or or or, or asia this is something which is a core part of their clinical practice and it's a very important thing here and it actually helps you and saves you from many medical legal hassles in future so i believe if anyone wants to come to uk don't just come for the fun of it do a proper research uh, talk to someone in uk get a first hand experience from some you know uh, first hand account from someone who has been working there uh, and if he or she is working in the same hospital where they're applying it would be even better because uh, the working conditions are quite different in different hospitals uh, like some hospitals are very generous in giving us a shadowing period like my hospital gave me 6 weeks i i think it was way too generous some hospitals they do not they are not that generous uh, they usually give uh, maybe a week or two so do a proper research get your facts right and be prepared about what is going to come and uh, so that you don't have any false hopes and and, uh, and regarding the money well it might appear as if you are earning a lot but in in reality you, there is so many taxes to pay so many like car insurance your health insurance your uh, other expenses your uh, electricity water bills they are so high so actually when you your take home salary is quite uh, is not that good as compared to where you come from so i think if you if you know all this beforehand you would be a much happier person when you come to this country or else you 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 may not like it as much yeah great thank you thank you so much dr bandari dr ansari what's what's your verdict on this hmm so i mean most of the things have been told by dr bandari and those are pretty right but there are some uh, some things which i have a different take i mean it depends what you want to achieve here so you have to plan according to that if you you have to have realistic expectations and you have to plan everything ahead be be proactive go through everything what you can do for it and you'll it will be challenging initially but i think most of the time you'll like it then you can make up your mind what you want to do uh it is supposed to be a training post but it depends where you go so there are trusts there are departments 
as it depends on trust it depends on and the order and department as well how good they are and how good i mean how much they would like to support you but uh, there's a safeguarding done by the royal college of anesthesia for you that they can't even treat, they will not treat you like a specialty doctor and send you somewhere they will have to listen to you and they'll take you to the different areas as well and and get you the competencies done for you so they'll not keep you in two years in itu they'll have to keep you to the theaters as well to the ops as well and take you out of that as well so you will get an idea about the system that how it works you can you have a uh, you have a bit of uh, protection in terms of uh, medical legal expenses and everything so you are not uh, directly uh, directly uh, i mean di- you cannot be sued directly so there's always someone superior to you who you answer to and uh, that in that way you are a bit more protected and you can learn about all these things and then you can go ahead if you get a good department you might get a, a buddy as well who will tell you what to do what not to do uh, i think pranesh can tell you more about that but uh, uh, i didn't get that but there are some i've heard about some trust which give you that so it depends where you go and what how is your department but moreover i have learned uh, quite a lot here it is not like that i have come here i have come from a very good institute and i have learned quite a lot here so you will be happy after some time definitely but initial part would be challenging with respect to money yeah you don't get too much but it is not too less as well i mean you give a lot of money to the rent to the taxes and everything but i remember when i came here i had to take a loan of 1.5 lakhs with my wife and after i came here after the first two salaries i had enough that i i gave her i returned my the loan back to my wife and sent something to home as well so if you are smart you can save as well so moreover i you like it i suppose i am liking here depends what you are achieve what you want to achieve and how you get achieved yeah great great to hear that dr ansari yes as you said money plays a very very big part for us to relocate to the uk initially though yes uh, with the money that we get paid here it becomes easy to pay that off but but the similar situation was with me as well like uh, i came uh, last year in the month of november i had given my interviews in 2019 october and november you know and because of the covid it all got delayed and delayed mm. i think it it worked well for me because i saved some money because <laughs> before coming here i the same condition was with me i was thinking to take a loan of you know 4 to 5 lakh rupees because i came here mm. with my wife and uh, uh, you know a 3 year old uh, daughter that time so yes it mm. was very very challenging frustrating must have been hard yeah because you know you really get terrified if you're making the right call mm-hmm. right decision because we all i think we were in the comfortable shoes in the comfortable institutes where we were, we were working but the mm-hmm. zeal to learn something new something more True. something better definitely brought all of us here to the uk mm-hmm. uh, and i think that's working well for all of us so pranesh uh, you you've been a father recently how, mm-hmm. how has that been for you being you know uh, a father a doctor a husband it was a bit overwhelming to be honest uh, it's it's never easy if you don't have family around uh, that the type of upbringing we 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 have in india it's really difficult to um, i i must say i had to go through a lot which i wasn't prepared for but something that doesn't kill you only makes you stronger so it was a nice experience overall and i'm enjoying my life as a father my son is 6 and a half months old and it's, it's more and more fun every day now <laughs> in, ter- in terms of pulse of wisdom to anybody who is now uh, trying or applying for mti i would say there is something called as mti buddy which is an essential part of mti scheme which basically is the most useful thing that you guys can ever think of is is first hand guidance and first hand experience in your hospital where you are going to be relocated at and they are really helpful they are really really helpful you and i think nothing can help you more than a person who is in the in in the hospital and the city where you have to go to uh, i would personally suggest even if you don't have an mti buddy just find somebody and ask for help 
uh, there are many things that you you can't even imagine you can't even think of which will you which you have to face so it's not difficult but it's good to be prepared about for example opening a bank account it it's not easy uh, searching a house for rent it's not easy getting a number uh, i mean basically uh, there's so many things which are essential getting a credit card these are things which you we i mean at least i when i was in india i, I never imagined that it would be a problem to get a credit card with how we have banking in india so the only and only thing which will help you the most is have have somebody who is in your hospital or anybody who you know mm-hmm. and just get help right from uh, making an application to until the day you move to that city be in touch with that person and that that's the only thing which will help you the most because i think uh, all of us realize that it's different for every uh, every branch every field and every trust so for example ruchir south and me we both are mpi from different colleges mpi application is different for all different colleges and uh, it's similarly different for all the all the branches some some mtis have to pay a application fee which is good enough amount others they don't have to pay so it's a different thing for everybody the other most important thing is which i would tell you don't don't try to become somebody just be what you are i've seen many who try and basically try and become a brit a part of them they try and transition into british for example accent it becomes artificial when you try and put make an a british accent and it's it's more you know it's it's worse than having a, a an indian english accent so just be yourself if you're honest and if you're if you are true to what you are doing everybody is going to help you whatever you do even if you're committing mistakes one after the other i've seen people committing mistakes many mistakes but everybody is still supportive because they know you're true they know you are you're honest and you are working that is all everybody wants from you they would they would not want you to you know think something do something and show something your honesty will definitely pay you maybe later but they definitely will pay you so i think these are the only things that you i can suggest right now if somebody is is wanting a bit more guidance some experience or they i think they are free to contact any of us all of us we are all mm. um, we will all be will be very happy to answer any questions later yeah all right thank you thank you so much pranesh so uh, i think uh, we will be coming to the end of the session but there's one very important thing that i forgot to ask earlier so uh, as mti is a restricted sort of visa you know the maximum you get is 24 months ha like the, did that stop you from coming to the uk like uh, because you were when you were coming you were very very sure that you'll have to move back to your country like after two years but did that stop you like or like does that cause any sort of stress to you i think i was more happy uh, i think that was a thing that was mm. basically made me go for it that it's just going to be there for two years because my 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 eventual plan was to go back to is to go back to india so if there was something which is only for two years then trying i mean giving you two years is not a big thing it's it's not a bad deal so that was i think one of the things that made me actually go for it dr ansari what about you so i think it didn't matter to me to be honest i mean i had different plans and those will those are changing by the time because uh and thing because things covid and everything everyone is changing so plans will change definitely so what i can tell you if is that i have seen my plan was to give an exam clear that and and go into uk as a specialty doctor uh, which i i have cleared the exam but i came as an mti just to learn here as well but i have seen mtis who have completed their training and they have not got the any exam done they are not eligible for gmc through an exam actually but trust still employs them with a specialty doctor and give them a, a certificate sponsorship without any uh, qualification as well 
but they will train you till that level that they can use you so if you are worried that uh, your aim is to settle in uk and you are coming through tier 5 visa and you are thinking maybe what will happen will you have to go back but i think you have options especially in anesthetics so they will not let you go until unless you want to go because they will train you in mti to that level they can use you and uh, and you can extend mti as well i have no i have known people who have extended to 6 months and one year one year especially after covid started so not an i issue think I, yeah i think this is a thing that i would like to add as south is mentioning the for the time when there was covid the mti had a provision to extend visa by one year i don't know if it's still there or not i believe not but they were doing it that 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 can be still done i would say because i know many people you know who who actually got their visas extended but as dr ansari said you know it it's entirely up to you you know, like uh, as pranesh you have a like a version that two years was okay for you like many people you know just mail me that what happens after two years will i have to go back and everything so i do tell them that you know if you're planning a long long term settlement in the uk probably you should come to the royal college exams or through the plab like but if you want to explore if you want to see how the western medicine works how nhs works i think mti is a great platform because to me as well i had given three interviews for the mti got offers from two of them luckily i got the tier 2 stuff so you know i just dropped that idea and directly opted this but yes uh, what about you dr bandari uh, did that stop you from coming or did that make you nervous or stressed out uh no actually it uh, it worked in my favor because my uh, family were very skeptical of me going abroad and they thought that if he if he goes outside he won't come back but mm-hmm. but on knowing that it's just it's just a two year visa they were, they were also sure that okay he'll have yeah. to come back there there is no option for him to you know stay back <laughs> and secondly it's not just about the clinical skills and the knowledge that you come to uk i think it's more mm. important that uh, you come here for a different uh, perspective to life as a different take is the different way of living and uh, you of communicating with people of treating with the uh, you know of, of uh, the different scenarios that can happen in life it makes you more independent it makes you more you know you you, you come more you, you plan things much better so this is this is something i i think two years is a good good period of time it does not affect your career even if you go back to india it's not that you'll have to start from scratch and probably you will have some edge when you go back to your country maybe the corporate hospital they would hopefully they would like prefer you over other candidates uh, see it is a very important part of how to communicate even in india you know patients they want better communication it's gone out those days where you could just get away without telling the patient anything about his diagnosis or treatment options you need to tell them the way they the the people in british the doctors in british they explain to that patient every every minute details of the treatment it is something that we should learn and we should you know we should reciprocate in our in our own country so i think good two years is a very good time i'm not sure about other branches but in oncology they are very short of doctors and they will keep you so i have mm. i have already been given offer by my staffing agency like if this is two years is just on contract or on paper you want to stay back longer obviously we won't let you go so if you want to stay back in uk i have a first I have a feel of how things work in uk i think mti is a very good route to come come work here if you like it you can always change your visa from tier 5 to tier 2 it's not that difficult there are many ways of uh, you know setting setting down in, this, in the nhs and i'm sure you'll find your path once you're here that's true that's true so it's basically coming to the uk working with the nhs getting the experience and yes uh, if you feel because you know uh, when we all are coming we all are being invested in you know like the training the time the expenditure everything that's been endorsed into us like dr ansari was saying they train you up to a level because it's beneficial to them as well so yes uh, you know coming to the uk even if you get 2 years it's more than enough if you want to switch visas there are ways you know and it, it's doable that's what we want to say all right gentlemen thank you so much for all the lovely time all the you know 
experiences and thoughts that mm-hmm. you all have shared you know it's going to benefit a lot of people in you know I indirectly so, so uh, i would thank everyone especially pranesh for you know arranging you both lovely gentlemen and uh, thank you Our so pleasure. much for all your time definitely please welcome uh, you're always welcome to over half the day what to do yeah we'll be looking forward to it definitely definitely so guys uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel you can go to youtube it's uk dreamers uh, my website is www.ukdreamers.info if you've got any further queries you can mail it to us i'll give the link below uh, till then keep dreaming keep the determination on and yes if you are that determined you can definitely one day in the uk thank you so much take care bye bye